Good day everyone. In today's lesson, we will be having the continuation of lipids. As we all know, we are down to the third macromolecule called lipids. Let's talk about the lipid properties. During the last lesson, I already hinted some properties of lipids. Today, we will exploring both physical and chemical properties as well as the classification of it. The physical properties of lipids are they are soluble to nonpolar solvents only. They cannot mix well with water because of the fact that the water has a polar bond. Water has both positively and negatively charged at both ends, while lipids, or commonly known as oils, have none. Lipids have no ionic charges, and especially cooking oils are usually uh, solid at room temperature. Others are non-crystalline solids. Their structure are, are not organized. Usually, lipids, uh, in this case, fats and oils, are naturally colorless, odorless, and tasteless. We have five chemical properties wherein a simple explanation of processes of chemical reaction will be shown and explained. One, the hydrolysis or the addition of water. Uh, two, we have the saponification or the conversion of fats and oil to form soap and alcohol. Three, hydrogenation, wherein molecule of hydrogen is mixed up to a compound. Four, halogenation, wherein the diatomic molecule from halogen family is being added to a particular compound. And lastly, we have the rancidity. The development of lipids in exposure to different external variables such as heat, light, moisture, and air that gives lipids an undesirable and unusual odor. The first one is hydrolysis. Hydrolysis, as I previously mentioned, is the addition of water to the lipid compounds. Remember that in previous lesson, uh, the triglyceride and water as a byproduct was formed in condensation reaction between glycerol and tripathic acids. Hydrolysis is the reverse reaction of the condensation. Eh, but sir, if lipids cannot mix well with water, how come these two compounds are being combined together? No? This process can only obtain through metabolism. This process called lipolysis takes place in the cytoplasm. The resulting fatty acids are oxidized by beta-oxidation into acetyl-CoA, which is used by the Krebs cycle. As you can see in the image, we have completed the reaction and breaks down the triglyceride and three water molecules are already part of the product. The second in the list is saponification. It is a process that involves the conversion of fat, oil, or lipid into soap and alcohol by the action of heat in the presence of aqueous alkali. For example, uh, fat reacts with sodium hydroxide to produce a glycerol. Other alkali uh, solution is potassium hydroxide. You can create soap with uh, potassium hydroxide also. The third one is hydrogenation. Since the process of hydrogenation adds hydrogen atoms to oil, it will reduce the number of unsaturated fatty acids and increase the number of saturated fatty acids. Unsaturated fatty acids, if you remember, has double bonds in a chain. The addition of hydrogen breaks the double bond of unsaturated fatty acids. Since hydrogen is diatomic molecule, a single chain of monosaturated fatty acid will only need one molecule of hydrogen to produce a single chain of saturated fatty acid. Uh, the next one is halogenation, the fourth one. Halogenation is a process of adding molecule of halogens into different organic compounds such as tunga fatty acid. For example, a linoleic acid has to double bond, and to break this bond through halogenation, we will use iodine. 
since we have two double bonds to break, we need two molecules of iodine. That is four iodine in total, ano? four iodine atom. Uh, this yields into stearate tetraiodinate, which is useful in production of detergents, soaps, and cosmetics. The last one is rancidity. Transidification is the process of complete or incomplete oxidation or hydrolysis of fats and oils when exposed to air, light, or moisture or by bacterial action, resulting to or in antecedent taste and odor. Sa Tagalog, ito yung maanta na lasa ng mga kinakain natin. When exposed to, um, pwedeng hangin sa uh, liwanag or mga sunlight, exposed sunlight sa heat, moisture, or pwede ring bacterial action. We have two common types of rancidity wherein the catalyst are water and oxygen. Number one is hydrolytic rancidity which refers to the odor that develop when triglycerides are hydrolyzed and free fatty acids are released. This reaction of lipid with water may require a catalyst, no? leading to the formation of free fatty acids and glycerol. Meanwhile, oxida uh, oxidative rancidity is associated with uh, the, the degradation by oxygen in the air. The double bonds of unsaturated fatty acid can be cleaved by free radical reaction involving molecular oxygen. This reaction causes the release of malodorous and highly volatile aldehydes and ketones. Because of the nature of free radical reaction, the reaction is catalyzed by sunlight. We also have classifications of lipids and structures uh, and structured into two. One is based on chemical composition, the other is based on biological function. In chemical composition, we have simple lipids, compound derived and miscellaneous. Simple lipids these lipids are the esters of fatty acids with alcohols and carries no other substance and mostly insoluble in water but highly soluble in nonpolar organic solvents such as chloroform and benzene. Um, an example of uh, these are cooking oil and waxes. The second one is compound lipids. Compound lipids are esters of fatty acids then and alcohols Containing additional groups, kanina yung simple is no additional groups. The compound contains uh, esters of fatty acids and alcohols con uh, and containing another additional groups. They are uh, again divided into three, three types. One is uh, phospholipids, uh, which means uh, we have this lipid plus phosphorus group. We also have glycerophospholipids. And the last one is spingiophospholipids. The third one is uh, the derived lipid. These lipids are obtained on hydrolysis of simple and complex lipids. An example of uh, this classification is testosterone, progesterone, cholesterol, and steroids. Usually, uh, these functions as hormones uh, na matatakal natin maya maya. And the last one in this category is the miscellaneous. Uh, a large number of compounds possess characteristics of lipids when we say miscellaneous. Such compounds come under this category are carotenoids, uh, squalene, and terpenes. Now, the last classification is based on biological functions. The first in this category is lipids functions as a storage. Lipid storage uh, is, spe is especially sphingolipid and uh, an esterified cholesterol is found in liver and spleen. In the, in the brain, uh, glycolipid storage predominates often with some decrease in 
uh, myelin white matter. The condition is inherited as an autosomal recessive trait. The structural lipids, meanwhile, function as structure in our body. In blood and body fluids, phospholipids from, uh, form structures in which fat is enclosed and transported throughout the bloodstream. The last one is the signaling lipids. Uh, lipids help form nerve cell membranes, uh, insulate neurons, and facilitate the signaling of electrical impulses through the brain. And that is all uh, for our lesson for today. Medyo maikli lang ang lesson natin ngayon kasi natakal na natin almost kalahati nung last meeting. Now, activities will be announced in the GC and FB group. I hope you learn today at yung module nyo about sa lipids, ipapasa ko na lang mamaya. Goodbye and see you again in the next lesson.